Let's talk about a novel biomarker for muscle quality and quantity. I know many of you are focused on the importance of preserving lean muscle mass, maintaining lean muscle mass and strength as you get older. Today, we're going to talk about serum creatinine and how that is independently associated with lean body mass, muscle strength, and muscle quality. I want to share with you this paper here, serum creatinine as an indicator of lean body mass in vegetarians and omnivores. And this was published in the journal Frontiers in Nutrition in September of 2022. So normally, serum creatinine is a marker of impaired kidney function. Uh, kidney disease, chronic kidney disease, when it's elevated over 1.5 milligrams per deciliter, that would indicate some sort of kidney failure. But besides that, most clinicians are not looking at serum creatinine to approximate your lean body mass and your muscle quality. But since serum creatinine is a normal waste product of muscle metabolism, it is a reliable biomarker for muscle mass since it's continually produced and filtered through the kidneys. However, many factors can impact serum creatinine levels, the scientists say, most notably declining kidney function as well as pro inflammatory markers and blood pressure reduction medications and the like. But serum creatinine is generated from muscle again. Concentrations are impacted by age, sex, body size. And the purpose of this investigation, the scientists say, was to examine the relationship between serum creatinine, lean body mass, and hand grip strength in healthy, non-athlete, vegetarian, and omnivore women and men. The scientists hypothesized that serum creatinine would be positively associated with lean body mass and hand grip strength in both genders, with omnivores exhibiting high higher levels of creatinine, lean body mass, and hand grip strength compared to vegetarians. So here are the baseline characteristics. And you look here at the average muscle protein per kilogram of body weight in the omnivores versus vegetarians. And if you look here, it was about 1.95 grams per kilogram of body weight of protein uh, for omnivores, about 1.47 grams per kilogram in the vegetarian men. Comparing and contrasting that to the women, the omnivorous women, the baseline characteristics of protein per kilogram intake was 1.26 grams per kilogram. In contrast to the omnivores, there was only 1.09 grams of protein consumed per kilogram of body weight in the vegetarians. Now, here's what's interesting is there was significant differences in the serum creatinine. Females, the omnivores had 0.79, their creatinine ratios. And again, the units here are milligrams per deciliter. This is a common liver function, kidney function test that is found on your blood work. Let's look at the, the uh, vegetarians. It was only 0.72. And I will see that, I will say, I see this quite commonly in my clients who have not enough muscle mass or are low protein diets, their serum creatinine is closer to 0 0.6, 0 0.7 as you are seeing here. Now in the male clients who are omnivores, the serum creatinine was 1.04. Comparing that to the vegetarians, you have 0.89. And so you see a significant difference and the p-value uh, was 0.03 and the p-value for the females, again, comparing 0.79 creatinine to 0.72 was 0.034. So there are significant differences here as are statistically significant differences in hand grip strength. Let's go down to, and this was represented in kilograms. So I've shared with you my grip strength test um, that was in pounds. This is in kilos, so roughly double this if you want to do pounds. Uh, but in the omnivores, the hand grip strength was 41.8 kilograms. In contrast to the vegetarians, it was only 35.8. And the p-value there is 0.009. So that is statistically significant. If we look here at the females, in the omnivores, it was 24.9 kilograms compared to the vegetarians, 22.3. And I want to continue and talk a little bit more about the importance of protein, what creatinine does, differentiating creatinine from creatine, and talk about some final findings from this particular study. Just want to always say thank you for being here. If you're enjoying that content, hit that like button. Be sure to share this as a text message with a friend who might benefit from this information. When you do your standard blood work, it's important to look at creatinine as well as other biomarkers. We have the full uh, blood work cheat sheet over at highintensityhealth.com. Just opt into our email list. You get the cheat sheet, print this out, go to your doctor, say, hey, these are the 24 or about 30 biomarkers that I want to look at. Nothing is esoteric. Nothing is boutique. They should be able to run this at any commercial lab throughout the world. So download that. Also, my friends, we're talking about creatine and creatinine here today. It's important to recognize that when you pair creatine with electrolytes, you can enhance your exercise performance, hydration, as well as strength. We have the novel creatine containing electrolyte sticks over at Myoscience. There's over 575 reviews from customers like you. Wendelin, who listens to the podcast, said, we use these daily on week-long hikes, averaging 13 miles per day over all kinds of terrain. They kept us hydrated and energetic for the challenges. Brian M. just recently left a review. He says, this is a unique product given it contains creatine and it actually tastes good. 
So you can check out some of the many reviews over at myoscience.com. Please save with the code podcast. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. Myoscience with, with an X. Save with the code podcast at checkout. So let's talk about how creatinine can be used as a biomarker of muscle quality as well as strength. Okay, so let's talk about where does serum creatinine come from? Well, the scientists say creatinine is generated at a constant rate of spontaneous non-enzymatic breakdown of creatine in muscle cells. Due to its steady production and the fact that it is freely filtered throughout the kidney, serum creatinine is clinically used as an indicator of kidney function and high serum concentrations of creatinine over 1.4 milligrams per deciliter are a marker of chronic kidney disease and kidney function. So again, we're not trying to get our serum creatinine levels super physiologic. What we're just trying to look at here when you do your basic labs is, is your serum creatinine on the higher end of normal or on the lower end of normal? Now, if it's on the higher end, as well as abnormal levels of blood urea, nitrogen, and other kidney associated markers, that can be a indicator that some sort of kidney function is being compromised. And I also recommend if you have a history of prediabetes or diabetes, you look at your urinary creatinine to albumin ratios. This is actually not part of the blood work cheat sheet, so just write this down. When we're looking at kidney function and the compromise within the microvasculature within the kidney, a impaired albumin to, this is urine again, not serum, urine. We're talking about Hitherto, we've been talking about serum creatinine. Urinary imbalances in the creatinine to albumin ratios is a marker of kidney dysfunction, as well as elevated creatinine above 1.4. So again, if you have a history of cardiovascular disease, as well as metabolic disease, add on, this is an $11 test at LabCorp. It costs nothing. You just have to pee in a cup. And they will look at the ratio of the albumin that's being leaked through your kidneys. And if you have kidney dysfunction, microvascular complications, heavy metal exposure, prediabetes, that can be high. And so I've seen that in clients and we rule that out. When we see changes in blood urea nitrogen, GFR, glomerular filtration rate, as well as elevated creatinine. So just understand that that test is available. The scientists say low serum creatinine concentrations can indicate acute illness, severe liver disease, and loss of muscle mass, as well as malnutrition, muscular dysfunction, or sarcopenia in older adults. Also, serum creatinine is linked with hydration status as concentrations are lower in dehydrated states. So that's important to recognize that when you do your labs, make sure you're hydrated. And you can see that when you see your uh, serum sodium start to increase as well. Okay, in the present report, participants were young, healthy adults screened for chronic disease, underweight, and medical conditions. Thus, this report suggests that low normal serum creatinine concentrations were linked to low body mass, reduced strength, and vegetarian diet adherence in healthy young adults. They also say that participants were likely well hydrated when tested since less than 5% of the adults had high serum sodium concentrations above 146 milliequivalents per liter. The vegetarian men and women averaged creatinine concentrations below the midpoint of the reference ranges. So that will be below the midpoint, which is 0.7 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter for men and for women. In men, serum creatinine concentration was below 0.95 milligrams per deciliter in 81% of the vegetarians in contrast to only 13% in the omnivores. Although not statistically significant, serum creatinine was below 0.75 milligrams per deciliter in 67% of the vegetarian women compared to just 42% of the omnivorous women. Now in figure one here, you can see the images of the serum creatinine levels and their association with uh, lean body mass as well as hand grip strength uh, in both and dietary protein. So it's important to recognize there is a correlation between quality of the protein, quality of the muscle tissue, and serum creatinine. Again, this is just a biomarker that you can look at. You can follow your trends. If you see a sudden shift in serum creatinine, that would warrant deeper investigation. If you're trying to track your progress in the gym and, and so forth and, you're, and, and titrate your protein intake, you might want to look at serum creatinine as, as an association or proxy there. So as we wrap up here, the scientists say that this study shows that both men and women who follow an omnivorous diet have significantly greater dietary protein intake, serum creatinine levels, and grip strength compared to vegetarian train men and women. Additionally, the data show that creatinine is positively correlated with lean body mass and hand grip strength, and that dietary protein is positively correlated with lean body mass. Data offer the possibility that in older adults, serum creatinine may be a complementary indicator of muscle mass and strength and can be utilized by practitioners and coaches, particularly for advising on vegetarian clients. They showed a positive relationship with the larger effect size between serum creatinine 
and hand grip strength, with CM creatinine explaining 41% of the variance in hand grip strength. It is known that dietary protein, and specifically the amino acid leucine, leads to an upregulation and activation of the anabolic signaling systems responsible for muscle protein synthesis. We have previously shown that in vegetarians and vegans who average less than the protein-recommended dietary allowances, the RDA value of 0.8 grams per kilograms per day, an increase in protein intake by 18 grams per day significantly increased muscular strength in the absence of a training program. This novel finding suggests that increasing protein intake above the RDA when intake is low has beneficial effects on strength levels in vegetarians. It is well documented that inadequate protein intakes are associated with muscular protein breakdown leading to catabolism and functional decline. Why is this important? Because 96% of American adults are metabolically unhealthy. The quality of their muscle is not what it should be. So if you are going vegan or vegetarian, you're probably under eating protein, my friend. So at least add eggs in there. Have some whey protein, maybe some raw dairy or fish at a bare minimum to get above the RDA of protein. Because we know that as you get older, muscle protein synthesis is blunted. You Just having protein is not sufficient to increasing muscle protein synthesis. There's higher rates of breakdown. So you have to optimize protein because muscle is so important for aging, for preventing sarcopenia and frailty and leading to culminating in living in an assisted living facility. You don't want that, my friends. I have friends and people in my life who work in these settings where they have to wipe the bums and the private parts of elderly people because they're so frail, they can't even go to the bathroom by themselves. I'm telling you, you do not want to be that person. So start now, start today, prioritize protein, prioritize resistance training, and use potentially serum creatinine as a biomarker of how much protein you're getting for your body requirements, your unique physiology, and your exercise sessions, making sure that you have enough muscle on your body for your frame, and you're supporting that with adequate protein amounts. And we've talked about in various videos, aiming for 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram of ideal body mass of protein seems to be kind of the sweet spot. Resistance training, if you need if you need help with that, go to courses.highintensityhealth.com. A lot of courses, a lot of tools at your, at your fingertips to help you learn the tactics and strategies here. Hopefully you found this paper helpful and I'm grateful that you tuned all the way in. Thanks for sharing this with a friend. Thanks for hitting that like button and we'll catch you in a future episode down the road. Have a good day.